Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Don. And this is the International Space Station Science Garage. Uh, we have... I'm just along for the ride here. Go ahead, what do we got? Uh, we have an example of an aeroponic... Uh, uh, an you aeropo expected me to know that. An aeroponic growth chamber. Holy cow. And that's, that's what we have here. That's what that thing is. Yeah, it's, it, it's an aeroponic growth chamber. Okay, so it doesn't look like anything you'd want to drink. No, you don't want to drink it. It's a, means, <laughs> it's a means of growing plants. Yeah. And okay. this is what NASA uses on orbit, is aeroponics. And think oh, of hydroponics. That's where, okay. you grow, where you grow plants without any dirt, right? You, you mean you hydro meaning uh, uh, water. water. Right. Well, aeroponics is one stage removed from hydroponics. You grow plants with nothing. You grow plants with air, yeah. sa air saturated with water okay. around their roots, mm -hmm. and, and you feed them all the nutrients they need. And then the, the plants uh, grow outside of the, the root chamber like they normally do. So how does this differ from hydroponics? You don't still have water involved. Well, there's less water involved. Less so water involved. with a hydroponics, you might have like uh, several mm -hmm. gallons of water with mm -hmm. the roots stuck into the water. Mm -hmm. With aeroponics, you have maybe only a few ounces of water that's mm -hmm. atomized and circulated around a mm -hmm. chamber where the roots are just hanging in the air. Whoa, that sounds like science fiction. And, and that, that is what you'd want to do in a weightless environment so you wouldn't have to deal with how do you handle large quantities of liquid being pumped around the roots. And, and liquid's valuable too. You it is. You don't worry about as much. So aeroponics is the way to go if you're going to be in a weightless environment where water is a precious commodity. Okay, so the, you're, both, in both cases you're kind of without dirt. Right. You're, you're without and dirt. Dirt is a good thing for plants. Isn't dirt it? is a good thing for plants, but fortunately, we can figure out what most of the nutrients are that plants need from the dirt, and we can give them to the plants by dissolving them in the water uh, that's either in hydroponics or the smaller quantities of water that are in the aeroponics. Right. And so you could still get plants to thrive and be healthy. So this sounds like a big scientific uh, area here. It is a big scientific area. Space. This is uh, the, the farmers of our uh, world. Uh, like, well, dirt's cheap, stuff. and so you know it's not it, a big deal. So well, this is more of a, go ahead. Th this is this is more of a, a scientific way of growing things when you don't have a lot of dirt. Okay, so let's take examples of places that need food that don't have a lot of dirt, uh, like in the desert somewhere. Yeah, or Antarctica. Antarctica. Or uh, maybe mobile applications, like if you're on some kind of vessel and you want to grow some mm -hmm. garden greens to yeah. spice up your food or something mm -hmm. like that. Spacecraft, uh, you know, colonization, you're going away from planet Earth, you're probably going to be using uh, either hydroponics or aeroponics to grow your plants. Okay, so it's, it's a space, it's driven by a space need, at least. With, or, with NASA has grabbed it and right. is uh, running with it for space. But it has applications to all kinds of It places. does. And we are this doing this on space station right now, mm -hmm. using aeroponic uh, gardening techniques mm -hmm. to uh, raise plants uh, in the orbital environment on space station. Okay. So what do we got? Explain this to me. Now, this is a very interesting looking device you have here. Yeah. And, and this is really set up in sprouter mode. So this one is not actually running in an aeroponic mode right now because mm -hmm. there's a, a pretty big bucket of water down here. and we're just getting the seeds to sprout. But what I have here is this plant called Arabidopsis. Arab that's his name or is that what it is? It, that's what, it, it's both. Okay. Arabidopsis. Is that what it says here? Is that yeah. what you have written here? You, yeah. You can't see it, but there's some like Yeah, Arabidopsis. Writing. Rabi well, and you have the date it's when you started. It's a dinosaur or something. Arabidopsis? Yeah. You say like that. You Arabidopsis. Know, Arabidopsis. Arabidopsis versus Velociraptor. It's genetically very simple, mm -hmm. and scientists have gravitated towards Aridopsis as a, a model plant that uh -huh. they're studying its genome with. And they can torque with this plant, and they can make different uh, variants on it to see, see what happens. So it's a, it's a model plant used by scientists to study different genome effects. So if we're growing more stuff. 
for, for yeah for, for learning for learning, learning how, how plants work. It's so just like we do experiments right. on mice mm -hmm. that are related towards human beings. Yeah. And so why do we do the experiments? Yeah, so this is a plant equivalent of a mouse. I wanted to see, yeah. could you have a potted plant in a corner? And the answer was? Uh, it's difficult to do, but you can. You can. Yes. But it's important because you got to grow. To, I mean, it's in here like regular experiments on space stations. Oh, there are. There, there are regular experiments that to, have to, for uh, the, for formalized the... pieces of hardware with terrariums and, and all of that stuff. Right. And, and they use aeroponics to grow these seeds, and, and, and that's part of a, uh, a big principal investigator experiment. But you didn't do it that way. You no, just I just, all I, I, I flew with seeds, and then I tried to figure out how to do this once I got on orbit. But your plants were pretty big. You told me I, you, I had a sunflower. I, I was able to grow a sunflower that was from a meter a and a half long. From a seed. Yeah, and it bloomed, and it made seeds. All right, so I'm guessing these, these experiments were from these principal investigators didn't have anything really big growing Well, they, they can't, you know, they, maybe they have a growth chamber about like that, or right, maybe so, the growth chamber's like this. But yours was out in the open. Mine was out in the open. So you had like so, a garden going on. Well, I don't around. know what I call it a garden, but I, I had a few I think I would plants. call it a, I would call it a, like a, a garden. So you had like a park. So the space zucchini. What were we saying? You grew your own stuff. Yeah, I right? I wanted a, to see whether you could have without a lot of equipment that took power and computer control and all that, just yeah. the equivalent of a potted plant in the corner in space station. All right. And so I brought a few seeds. I brought zucchini, broccoli, and sunflower. Okay. I figured those would be good things to try and experiment a number of different concepts of trying to grow these aeroponically, passive aeroponics, so it didn't have pumps and motors and stuff like that moving around, just with plastic bags passively sitting there in front of light on station, using nutrients composted from food, so I started a little compost mm -hmm. pile, and I was able to have space zucchini. In which you didn't eat this, of course. No, oh, no, no, because oh, he became uh, uh, like a crew member. Now, sunflower mm -hmm. normally grows really straight right. stalks, right? Yeah, yeah, which are and, gigantic, some of them. And so I had this sunflower a meter and a half, meter and a half uh, tall, That's and big. the stalk was like that thick. The stalk was maybe three millimeters thick, so it didn't put any energy into making the stalk because it didn't need to. So the stalk, how big is a stalk on the, the uh, beefy? Uh, yeah, so they, the you know, a, a sunflower that'd be a meter and a half tall would probably have a stalk maybe uh, six, seven, eight millimeters in diameter. This is, this is less than half. Yes. And so uh, the sunflower is kind of like human beads in that they're inherently lazy, and if they don't have to put the energy into making a stalk to stand up, they don't. So that stalk would not work. It would on not work on our fall over. Yeah, and and another thing, the sunflower stalks are straight. Yeah, this stalk was just all curvy. That's where we and everything. naturally go. So, well, what would you? What, so, what's the idea? So, you have these little things that you really can't get anything you can eat. Right. right. You've had this stuff grown in a hallway. Yeah. Uh, in a space there, yeah. in the middle of the module, and you could eat that stuff. You could. So, what 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 would you think if you're going on a trip to Mars, let's say, and you need to grow some? vegetables or fr fruit or what I guess, I don't know, yeah. whatever, whatever you want to grow, uh, how would, what do you think the ideal Well, you would want to have a genuine design engineered growth chamber mm -hmm. based off of aeroponics, mm -hmm. and you would want to bring... You have a farm, basically. Yeah, you, you'd have a, a small a far, farm. A farm module. Yeah, that's right, a farm mm -hmm. module. Mm -hmm. I like that concept. All right, so that's what you would, and you'd set it up right so the stuff has enough room to grow. Enough room to grow with, with adequate lighting, mm -hmm. and, and you'd provide the nutrients and you mm -hmm. do it in an aeroponic manner and you could grow a significant amount of uh, uh, pleasantries to add to your normal food.